Okay, so here I'm going to look at uh, problem 18 uh, from chapter 24. Okay. And this is a variation on, uh, on one of the examples that we already covered, the parallel plate capacitor. So we have two parallel plates. Uh, they have surface area A, and let's say that uh, one is positively, one is uh, negatively charged. They have some separation of D, and we actually calculated the, uh, calculated the capacitance for this configuration, for this uh, geometry. Uh, let's, let's go over this again. So first of all, uh, capacitance is defined to be as Q by delta V, the charge that's accumulated per uh, potential difference that's applied or potential difference that's uh, present in this case. And now what we need to do uh, is to calculate this explicitly. So I'm gonna leave Q as Q. This delta V uh, is going to be, so this is going to produce some electric field. And let's just draw some electric field. It's going to be uniform. So delta V is going to be just that uniform electric field, strength times the distance. Now I can do this, so delta V formally is this integral, of course. But in this case, I don't need to take the integral because the electric field and the, my, if I choose a path that's just perpendicular to the plates, they're going to be parallel, this becomes a simple product and the strength of the electric field is constant. Right? So for a parallel plate capacitor, it's constant. So I can just take it out and this becomes E times T. Yeah, we did this already. Uh, I can write the expression for the electric field is going to be sigma by epsilon naught times d, and that sigma is of course q divided by s by epsilon naught d. Right, so as expected, as it should be, q's just go away. Uh, this moves the numerator, this moves the numerator, and we have epsilon naught. Sorry, they're actually using a here, so I'm going to switch to their notation you get this epsilon naught times the surface area divided by distance between the plates. Okay. Now, the variation they're making in this problem is that they're introducing a slab of conducting slab in between. Okay. And this has thickness L. And the question is, what will be the capacitance in this case? Now, uh, how, how, how would this change? So let's say that the, the, they, have the same, they have the same, uh, charge. Uh, this will lead to will this lead to some different potential difference between the two plates? That is, as you're moving a charge from here to over there, uh, would you need to do less work or more work or something like that? Just this is the same amount of work. Now the answer lies over here. Okay? So we need to take this integral uh, from one plate to the other and calculate the potential difference. Now here we didn't need to take the integral because it was very simple. We could just write this down. But here. Is it going to remain the same? So what kind of electric field would you expect here? So what would happen if you introduce a conducting slab in between these two plates? That's the question. Now what's going to happen is that first of all, the translational symmetry of the problem is not broken. This is a very large slab, so we still have the translational symmetry over this plane. Okay? So what this means is that electric field lines are still going to be perpendicular to the surface, right? They were perpendicular to the surface because of translational symmetry. So I'll still, I'm still going to have these electric field lines originating from this positively charged plate, but now they're going to come and hit this conducting slab and they must terminate there because there is an electric field inside the conductor. Now the only way they can terminate there is if I actually introduce some negative Q on this side of the slab, right? And then, on the other side, if I'm inducing a minus Q here, I must be inducing a positive Q. And from that positive Q, some new electric field lines are going to emerge and they're going to terminate on these negative Q lines. So what is going to happen is that my electric field is going to be interrupted throughout this conductor. Otherwise, it's going to remain unchanged. Okay? Now remember, the translational symmetry is not broken, so the electric field originating from over here is the same, the electric field terminating from here is the same, and they just go in parallel to each other uh, up to the plate. Inside the plate, it's zero, okay? So uh, let's say that this is your point one, this is your point two, I'm going to call this point three and four, okay? So this one is going to look like an integral, you know, from one to uh, two, d dot 
PL, but this is, in fact, an integral from one to three, uh, minus an integral from three to four, minus an integral from four to two. Okay, this integral is going to divide into three parts. And the first part we can take, okay, so they're not giving you the location of this, but it doesn't really matter, it's just this, uh, this distance from the slab to the uh, left plate. The third one you can take, okay, you know the electric field, uh, that, that, that's the distance, it's going to be just the distance from the slab to the right plate, and you can take the middle integral, this is just zero, because the electric field is zero. Okay. And then, what you're going to end up is that, so it's the distance from over here, times the electric field, plus the distance from here to here, times the electric field, well, that is the total separation between the plates minus the thickness of the slab. So this is gonna be E times uh, D minus L, okay? So instead of this D, my delta V is going to be E times D minus L, and that's going to get propagated all over, and my capacitance is going to look like this, okay? Now, if it makes the thinking easier, you can think that you take the slab and move it all the way to this plate, okay? Then it's trivial that you're just moving, so four and two would coincide. Uh, it's just going to be an integral from one to three, and that integral from one to three is going to be uh, just D times L times the electric field. Now, the electric field strength does not change. Uh, it vanishes inside the conductor. Outside the conductor, it doesn't change. Okay? Because you're producing some minus Q here, some plus Q here, so these act like plates. So this acts like a little capacitor of its own. This acts like a little capacitor of its own. Okay? And they have the same configuration as the original one. They have the same electric field strength as your original capacitor because they have the same charge densities on the plates and they have the same geometry. Okay? So the electric field strength doesn't change. What changes is the path over which the electric field uh, exists. Right? So over part of the path, it vanishes, so that goes to zero and uh, the capacitance accordingly changes. Uh, what's the net capacitance? And they're asking for if L is 0.4D, by what factor does the capacitance change when the sheet is inserted? So if L is uh, 0.4D, then this thing here becomes 0.60. It changes by a factor of one over 0.6. Okay? I don't know why this is being asked, but that is what, how I would answer this part. 